what is going on good morning and welcome back to the channel we need to have a little talk about this here f550 with a boom all right we're going to talk about this thing but first we need to get it up in the air and we need to go ahead and turn on all of our columns Get it floating. Okay, go around. I just inspect each tire, make sure we're safe. Looks all right. Make sure nothing's shifted. Everything looks good. Columns look all right. All right. So let's get this girl in the air. Thanks for hanging out with me again everybody um, you know we're going through some trying times right now as a, as a country but uh, we got to keep rolling ahead here and I want to show you ugh, why this 16 550 came in they were complaining about the low fuel pressure warning coming on and it having no power over 45. When I originally got the vehicle, this frame mounted pump was growling. I have done so many of these. Hey, I just threw a pump at it. I put one in and uh, it came back probably about a week and a half complaining of the same thing. And the new one was, was not growling as bad uh, as the first one. So I took it on the freeway and uh, on heavy XL, I had it matted down. I uh, think it would only go 80 miles an hour, obviously, with the, uh, the truck that it is. Um, but fuel pressure went down to 32 PSI. And obviously we know that's not gonna work. So I started looking further and after taking a fuel sample, it came back clean. But I'm asking myself, what's killing these pumps? and we had to get okay from the customer to remove the fuel tank. So when I took the fuel tank down, I automatically knew right when looking at it that we got a serious case of rust. Usually what I find is the roof of the tank is just completely rotted. Look at that. The environment that the top of the tank is in, you know, we remember diesel fuel is hydroscopic, so it normally wants to draw to itself water and when we have that level of air on top of the fuel, that environment in there is not conducive to uh, keeping the tank not rusting. So what we're gonna do is replace the fuel tank. We're gonna replace the rollover vent valve. We're going to replace the frame mounted fuel pump again and the fuel sender. Let's look in that fuel sender. This is what's going straight to the fuel pump. I mean look at all that rust that's in there. Um, 
So to prevent this, you guys are probably asking why we're going to be putting the same tank in. Um, obviously this tank is designed to hold diesel fuel, but the condition of the diesel fuel is going to be most important and additionally uh, adding an additive uh, on top of wherever we're getting diesel fuel regardless of the quality. So. Um, let me know if you guys have had this problem. This is a 40 gallon aft axle tank. Um, I did have some bullshit to work through. It was kind of tight in here. Couldn't really get to the fasteners very easy. So I want you guys to come with me as I uh, get this fuel tank assembled and ready to go. I did spill some diesel fuel here, so I'm gonna clean this up so I'm not tracking it all over. But definitely take note of that nobody wants to have rust in their fuel tank causing them a low power issue for sure so hey there all right so I got the fuel sender in fuel tank out of the box everything's brand new this is a Ford tank um, I didn't show this put in because I needed uh, assistant this locking ring is uh, pretty pretty hard to get on this is the tool um, you would need to use to re replace your fuel sender and get that locking ring off. This also works for your gas jobs too. Got a new gasket in there and next pretty much just going to go ahead and put these straps on just like that. They were in pretty good shape. Straps on, 19 mil nut. Just gonna run them down. And then the last thing we'll put in the tank is this brand new rollover vent valve. Cap off the old one. Alright, fuel tank's ready to be put back in. Get these little covers off. Fuel tank is going in just like that. Facing this way. Take these lines off. Now if you notice, this fuel sender actually has an additional port. So whatever type of contraptions you guys got on your truck, if you guys need a supply of diesel fuel, you have a quick disconnect that you can either plumb off of or put your own quick disconnect on so that you can supply your generator or whatever fuel source you're going to be needing to run diesel on uh, or machine that you're going to be able to run diesel on. So let me get a light in here and I need an air hose to operate this table and now we're going to be going up. Okay, everything's, everything's centered on the table, I'm centered between the frame rails, and it actually looks like we're going to have to come down on the truck a little bit. just a smidge so I can get it loosey and floaty. Okay, go around with the best. Where are you guys at? Run them up with some 15s. Go do the back side. Take the light. Okay. Our back's tight. 
front's tight. Now I'm gonna go for the connections for the fill. There you go. Okay, there's what we're going right there. Get these, get these fill lines on. Okay, don't be a dingling and not orientate your clamps right. Again, going for the Milwaukee. You can barely see that. We're gonna go for it. Sending it for you, adrenocide. This one from here? Nope, I sure can't. We're busting out all the Milwaukee's today. Okay, right, here we go. Send it. All right, now that we got those tightened, um, I'm gonna have to lower this thing down, and I'm gonna have to weasel my that ass here between the body and the rear tires somewhere in this location here to get up over the tank so yeah somewhere in there you can see that light in there that's where I gotta go all right Wody sins I am right here this is a very tight fit here between this body and these tires I was very fortunate that these lines, for as dirty as this truck is, came off the way they did because I don't have a lot of room to torque my fingers or my body. But that was literally, oh, I'm sorry, that was literally it right there. Pushing everything on, that stayed on. Red thing, I did have a problem get, sliding that red thing out. Um, but yeah, that's it you guys, fuel tanks in. Now all I have to do is hook the uh, hoses here that are under my arm pit uh, to the fuel filler dough. Having to remove these, I had to cut a ground wire, which I have to hook back up. Put this boy on. Slip this boy on. Okay. Okay. Let me cinch these lads down. Tightening. Honestly, if this was gasoline, I'd say not to not to do this, but this is diesel and shit don't lay on fire like that. Alrighty. That is it for reinstalling the tank. We have one more thing to do, and that is remove the frame mounted fuel pump. Okay, we're underneath, gonna get this frame mounted fuel pump out of here. Take these two twangs out. Disconnect our whiff sensor. Come up here, disconnect the fuel pump. Push down on that button there. 
And I just go ahead and tuck these out of the way because I don't want these to be I don't want these to be getting in my way. Alright, so we got a couple of fuel lines here on the back side. I forgot to say I had to take this tether off this line. These uh, PTO hydraulic lines were tethered to this bracket. So we got uh, one blue line here. I just pulled that tab out. Let me see if I can turn the light on for you. I pulled this tab out and then I'm squeezing this button here and I'm pulling it on, pulling it off just a little bit. Okay, I don't want to be start leaking fuel. Okay, this one has got two ears. These two ears I had to pull backwards just a tiny bit and I gotta push them down. Just like that, it slides down, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing and just barely slide this one off too. Okay, just before they come off. I don't wanna be leaking fuel just yet because I'm still gonna be working under here. So let's get this oil drain a little higher. All right, let's get our 15 on our Milwaukee. Where are you guys at? Come on, I'm repping you guys every time. We got uh, 415. We're gonna be reusing these. Remember, we still got two lines attached to the front of our pump. All four 15 millimeter nuts have been removed and captured for reusal. Um, all right, so that brings us to the inside. Okay, so this thing's definitely flopping around. So I'm gonna need two hands for this because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you guys, um, but I'm gonna have to get to the two connections that's on the other side. So this is how I got it set in the vise. Sitting in here just like this against the bracket. Um, this is a newer style one, so your guys is on your 1112s probably don't have this big contraption and don't have this little uh, lever that you gotta flip down to get the cap off. Um, but we gotta take these trim clips out and drop this piece of foam out. I got two trim clips here, that one comes out. I got two seven millies right here that hold these little uh, retainers on, I guess. And then once we're done, I'm gonna get a screwdriver and pull and pull this tab backwards. While I'm doing that, I'm going to tap the bottom and it's gonna come out. There's four channels that, you see that down there? There's four of these where the ears of the fuel pump mount to. So you gotta make sure you engage all four of them at once. So we're gonna get this bad boy out. All right, I opened the silly box with the one I got and one of these bloody ports was broken off so I had to go back down the parts get a new one and bring it back down to my shiza all right everything looks good let's get this boy reinstalled all right remember I was telling you guys about getting those feet in there see those feet right there down there's two on one each side so once you get them all in there it's basically just hit it down until that is fully engaged. Fuel pump down. All right, homie G Funks. Fuel pump is in, lines are clipped in. I guess we could give it a little douche real quick. Make sure she looks clean. Oh yeah. Looks good to me. I can go to any column now, and we're gonna lower it. Everything's going down. Nothing's in the way. Get her on the ground, I'm gonna fill her up with 10 gallons of fresh diesel, and then we're gonna take her for a ride. All right, we got the truck started. I've bled the fuel system. Uh, I've had it here running for, I don't know, about 10 minutes. 
Um, and we're gonna check codes, make sure we have nothing else in the system as far as low fuel pressure warning DTCs. And we're gonna take it for a road test and verify that the fuel pressure is staying where it should be at 80 miles an hour. Alrighty, we're gonna go ahead and identify the vehicle. Should recognize the VIN because uh, we already had this connected. Okay, let's go ahead and run our continuous memory on um, just the engine because that's where the DTCs were stored uh, in the beginning. They didn't have any on demand circuit codes. Put about 10 gallons of fuel in it so we're running running just a little low but not enough for road testing purposes so we do have one code low fuel pressure that's from the last road test because i never cleared it go ahead and get rid of that dtc Pull up our data logger, look at our PIDs, gonna go, um, let's go PCM, I wanna see all of them. I am working with IDS 117.03, that's the latest release, Adrenocide. <coughs> Adrenocide. <coughs> So I'm gonna come over here to my cursor. I'm gonna go ahead and clear everything, and I'm gonna be looking for uh, fuel pump lift command and FRP and FLP, and that's probably and that's probably it. I'm gonna go down here and uh, right now check out what we're reading: 80 psi. So we're gonna see if we are going to maintain that 80 psi while driving if that rust you saw in the tank and that fuel sender was the cause of our concern all right what i just found kind of cool or not cool but just information i guess so i have a low fuel warning on right now this is a 40 gallon tank and i put two five gallon fuel cans in it so for 40 gallon tank with 10 gallons on there IDS is indicating that's about almost six percent of fuel so oh, I'm gonna roll my window up all right so right now I'm gonna hammer it see what my fuel pressure is staying at about 77 That's definitely good. It's better than what we were. 